Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. As aerial warfare and mobility enter a new era, the U.S. military is preparing for the future by investing heavily in advanced aircraft technologies that promise to change how troops and equipment are moved, how missions are executed, and how air power is sustained in contested environments. One of the most transformative areas of development is in electric vertical takeoff and landing, or EVTOL, aircraft. These futuristic platforms combine the vertical agility of a helicopter with the speed and range of fixed-wing aircraft, all while being quieter, cleaner, and in many cases, cheaper to operate. But bringing these systems into real-world military use isn't just about technology. It's about rigorous testing, regulatory coordination, and strategic partnerships between government, industry, and academia. To accelerate this effort, the U.S. Air Force launched a groundbreaking program called AFWRX Agility Prime. AFWRX is a technology incubator within the Department of the Air Force focused on rapid innovation through collaboration. Agility Prime, one of its flagship programs, aims to harness the explosive growth in the commercial eVTOL industry and evaluate which of these systems might serve military missions in the near future. Rather than developing military-specific aircraft from scratch, Agility Prime flips the script. It brings together developers already designing eVTOLs for commercial markets, such as air taxis, logistics, and medical evacuation and provides them with military-grade test environments, airworthiness certifications, and operational scenarios. The Air Force's goal isn't just to buy aircraft, it's to shape a commercial market that aligns with national security interests. Among the eVTOLs being evaluated is Kitty Hawk's Heaviside, a sleek, fully electric aircraft designed for quiet, autonomous operations. Backed by Google co-founder Larry Page, Kitty Hawk has taken a bold approach to futuristic flight with its compact, high-performance designs. The Heaviside eVTOL is designed to be remotely piloted or fully autonomous. With a wingspan of 20 feet and a noise profile significantly lower than that of helicopters, the aircraft can cruise at 180 miles per hour and land in tight, urban or remote areas, making it ideal for forward medical evacuation or personnel insertion in contested environments. During Agility Prime demonstrations, Heaviside showcased not only its high-speed performance, but also its operational potential for military medevac missions. With its low acoustic signature, the aircraft can approach and extract personnel without giving away its position, an invaluable capability in both combat and disaster relief scenarios. Another key player in Agility Prime is Beta Technologies, a Vermont-based aerospace company developing the Alia A250, a larger, cargo-capable eVTOL platform inspired by the Arctic Turnbird. The Alia is designed to transport people or goods over 250 nautical miles on a single charge with vertical takeoff and landing and fixed-wing cruise flight. The Alia's distinctive design features a high aspect ratio wing, V-tail, and distributed electric propulsion system, allowing it to balance lift, efficiency, and control. This makes it ideal for delivering cargo to forward bases, conducting tactical resupply missions, 
or supporting special operations in areas where traditional runways are unavailable. Beta Technologies is also constructing a network of charging infrastructure to support rapid turnaround of electric aircraft in field conditions, an essential component if EV tolls are to be deployed at scale for military operations. Both the Heaviside and Alia aircraft have been tested under military supervision as part of the Agility Prime program helping developers gather performance data under demanding conditions and helping the military evaluate use cases, safety, and logistics requirements. But Agility Prime is more than just vehicle testing. The program includes simulation work, pilot interface studies, and the integration of next-generation autonomy systems. It explores how remote pilots can control EV tolls via satellite link or secure network, and how these aircraft can be used in swarms, convoys, or synchronized logistics missions. The military is also interested in how EDOT tolls might perform in contested or degraded environments where GPS signals are jammed, communications are intermittent, or landing zones are extremely limited. By partnering early with developers, the military can guide EV toll designs towards survivability, redundancy, and field repairable features. These collaborations are not just limited to the Air Force. The Army, Navy, and Marine Corps have also expressed interest in using EV tolls for distributed operations, resupply, reconnaissance, and casualty evacuation. In an era of great power competition, the ability to rapidly move small units, sensors, or critical supplies into dispersed and difficult terrain could tip the balance in future conflicts. Moreover, the reduced noise, lower operating cost, and minimal maintenance requirements of electric aircraft make them attractive for routine base operations, humanitarian assistance, and operations in environmentally sensitive areas. As testing continues, AFWorks and Agility Prime are proving that military innovation doesn't always have to come from within the Pentagon. Sometimes, the most disruptive breakthroughs emerge when the military steps into the commercial arena, not to dominate it, but to help steer it toward national defense priorities. By investing in flight certification, safety validation, and operational testing, the Department of the Air Force is ensuring that when these EVTOL platforms are ready for prime time, they'll be ready for the battlefield as well. The U.S. Navy and Marine Corps have consistently invested significant time, resources, and effort into advancing naval technologies. In 2017, they held the Ship to Shore Maneuver Exploration and Experimentation, S2ME2, Advanced Naval Technology Exercise at Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton in California. During this event, the Marines tested over 50 cutting-edge technologies, ranging from swarming unmanned surface vehicles to autonomous amphibious assault platforms. These systems were evaluated in various mission domains, such as early reconnaissance, threat detection, target neutralization, and movements ashore. Technologies that performed exceptionally well advanced to more formal operational testing and evaluation phases. The S-2ME-2 
placed particular emphasis on unmanned aerial systems designed for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance (ISR) missions traditionally carried out by sailors, marines, and special forces, often under significant risk. Drones were introduced during the S-2ME-2 to enhance the efficiency of future amphibious assaults. A notable innovation involved launching drones from special unmanned systems that emerged from AAVs, deploying them into the sky to perform ISR tasks. Alongside this, the Marines evaluated a special type of drone capable of vertical takeoff and landing, VTOL, to boost aerial support capabilities. The data gathered by these drones provides U.S. forces on the ground with critical tactical advantages. VTOL drones can lift off and land vertically, making them extremely adaptable for naval missions. These drones are outfitted with sophisticated radar systems that greatly improve situational awareness, enabling Marines to locate and track hostile targets from extended distances. Lasers have played a role in warfare for many years, ever since the invention of the first laser device. But only recently has their direct offensive potential become more practical thanks to the development of smaller and stronger energy sources. A notable system in this domain is the Boeing Yao one. The first laser was invented by Theodore Maiman on May 16, 1960, at the Hughes Research Laboratory in Malibu, California. Maiman used a high-powered flash lamp to energize a ruby with silver-coated ends, triggering the laser emission. It would take 36 more years before this principle was applied to Boeing's YAL, One Ampere Airborne Laser Initiative, which converted a Boeing 747-400 Farad into a powerful missile defense platform. The project began in 1996, with the goal of enhancing missile interception through the use of a chemical oxygen iodine laser. This coil system operates in the near-infrared range and is invisible to the naked eye. Our atmosphere, however, introduces distortion. The YAL-1 Ampere's Deformable Window and Laser Beam Control System DWLS, addressed atmospheric distortion through adaptive optics. Six large optical windows mounted in the aircraft's nose turret used deformable mirrors that could adjust hundreds of times per second to preserve beam coherence and precision. The system corrected wavefront aberrations caused by atmospheric turbulence, ensuring the high-energy laser stayed locked on target missiles during their boost phase. This sophisticated beam control system allowed the laser to deliver peak energy to the target, despite aircraft motion and atmospheric conditions at operational altitudes. Lasers have also proven effective in disabling UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles. At White Sands Missile Range, the U.S. Air Force has been testing directed energy weapons, including powerful microwave and laser systems against drone targets. These lasers destroy drones by burning holes through them, leading to their failure and crash. Such systems are in advanced stages of readiness and are intended to defend military installations from aerial surveillance. 
These tests evaluate not only the system's performance, but also operational tactics, deployment protocols, and compatibility with existing defensive infrastructure, all while offering a highly cost-efficient solution that engages targets at mere cents per shot. Another promising frontier is deploying laser weapons from naval vessels. In 2020, the USS Portland successfully tested the Laser Weapon System Demonstrator, LWSD, by neutralizing a UAV in flight. This solid-state laser, with a power output of 150 kilowatts, marked a major advancement in naval-directed energy capabilities. Installed on the forward deck of the ship, the LWSD was able to track, engage, and destroy aerial threats, underscoring its value as a maritime defense tool. This demonstration built on prior tests involving lower-powered systems, reflecting steady progress by the Navy toward integrating ship-mounted laser defenses across the fleet. As the U.S. military looks to the future, it's clear that the next generation of warfare will be shaped not just by advanced firepower, but by innovation, agility, and integration across domains. From the quiet flight of electric EVITOL aircraft, developed through programs like AFWORKS Agility Prime, to cutting-edge vertical takeoff drones, autonomous ISR platforms, and directed energy weapons, the battlefield is evolving at an unprecedented pace. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.